Welcome to the Boxing Talk Show. Fan but firm with the Hall of Fame boxing referee. I'm Joe Cortez and co-host John Zamel for all of Las Vegas. Come on, guys. Let's touch them up. Three fight. I'm Joe Cortez. Fan but firm. Welcome to the Fair but Firm show here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the boxing capital of the world. And you're watching us live. And only because we love doing this. We love sharing our boxing uh, knowledge and our information that we're going to try to give you guys every week. We know we're not the best, but we are hard to beat. Because as you all know, that boxing for us is something that we have to uh, share with you guys. I mean, it's nothing better than sharing the, the sport that I love the most. I've been in boxing for... Most of my life is I was 12 years old, it was only a couple of years ago. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I'm just telling you that I, I want to just keep on sharing it all we have. John? Man, I'm excited, brother. I'll tell you, we've been talking for the last couple of weeks. I know fans of the show, regular watchers have noticed that uh, we, we've been addressing how there's been a little bit of a lull in the boxing calendar. We've been saying it's about to start back up again. We're about to get it going again. Well, it's happening. Right now, this week, next week, the week after, it's going to be so action-packed. We have so many fights this week that would have been like the head of our show that we don't even have time to talk about this week. I mean, it's just I could not be more excited. I know Joe feels the same way. And uh, we're happy to be back in front of you talking about something other than, uh, than what's already happened or what's going to happen in the future. We're talking about what's happening this week yeah. I'm, I'm excited man happy no, boxing's back no no good. we have the good fights this weekend of course we got Lomachenko fighting that's we got the big one the rock star Mungia fighting and of course we got the females we got Cassandra Shields and uh, Christina Hammer mm -hmm. I mean the shield hammer and shield with the hammer she better use that shield than the hammer because it's gonna be exciting that's a good <laughs> fight man it, it, it could be we're across fight. all platforms that's the most beautiful thing boxing this weekend so exciting because you're on Fox you're on ESPN plus you're on Showtime you're on DAZN you're on Fox Sports 1 you're all over the place this I mean this weekend's a perfect microcosm of boxing in 2019 there's everyone from I mean we got Caleb Truax we have uh, Peter Quillen we have uh, uh, Dara Vyachenko we have uh, Joey Spencer one of our favorite one of this show's favorite prospects who we've had on I mean we have uh, so many fighters this weekend across all platforms across all three days it's uh this is a good fight weekend to be a fight fan, man. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of, a lot of fun. And I also got some news. Uh, perhaps uh, Devin Haney is fighting on May 4th. That is it's, exciting. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't when? know. It's not official, but we hope that that will be coming out have a, a, a May 4th. Where at? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be in Vegas. It's going to be out of town. I hope it's not uh, the same day of the, uh, well, it is. the Canelo. May 4th and, uh, is the same day. <laughs> But yeah, yeah you know, that's what's bad about the. Yeah, you got to have like three television fights. I don't know why they do that, Just though. to watch... Uh, uh, all the fights are at the same time. I mean, look I mean, at this weekend. Because I'm serious. I, you, you think they would kind of like know what else is going on, right? Like, look at this weekend. The last two weeks, you could have spread these out. Clarissa Shields could have been the most, the biggest fight of last week. We had nothing to talk about last week. Yeah. I mean, look at Danny Garcia's fight and Adrian Granados at uh, at uh, Dignity Health, whatever they call it now, in, in San Diego. You know what day that is? April 20th. The same day that we have the uh, Amir Khan fighting Terrence Crawford. Yeah. Some, another champion, you know, guy in the same division. I don't understand why they don't spread it out a little more. Well, you know, they, that's one thing that, that happens with promoters that they can't seem to get together. I mean, they should have, <laughs> yeah, we know that. They, they should have a symposium just for, should, for, yeah. for promoters to sit down and jot your dates down for the, for the year. So say, you know, as a potential, you know, fighters are named, yes. but I want to reserve these dates. And this way, there's no... no, no no, I couldn't no, agree more. No crossover. It's a little different to our friends overseas because it's kind of fun, you know, uh, because the time zones are so different. I don't mind when there's a little, you know, actually we prefer it. We talk about it a lot. Saturdays when we get done with our radio show here in Las Vegas, we uh, can go home and, and watch fights overseas and then we go have dinner and then we can watch fights here in America. It's kind of perfect. But, yeah. but when they're overlapping, you know, right on top of each other, it's, it's a lot harder. Well, let's talk about the, uh, the fight, the most important one next you week. You want to talk about the rock star? Well, yeah, let's talk about the rock star. I'm excited, man. You know, we got uh, Lobachenko. Yeah, I got questions about that. You got, and he's fighting uh, Anthony Crawler. And Anthony Crawler, uh, really un unknown, really, but, mm -hmm. he, but he was a world champion, WBA champion in 2016 and 17. And he lost his title to Jorge Linares. And therefore, the rematch. That means he could, Linares couldn't stop him. That means the guy must have something. Uh, I mean, he, you don't become a world champion by being a palooka. He became champion. Agreed. He's pretty decent. Even though he's unheard, unheard of, but maybe he's, uh, he'd make a statement Saturday night. Well, let's talk about this. Vasily Lomachenko. They call him the Matrix. They call him High Tech. Call him Loma. Call him Vasil or Vasily. This is the man. He's the, he's the rock star. He's on the top of everybody's pound for pound list. If you get to number three and you haven't said the name Lomachenko, then you got to start your list over. That's just the way it is. Now, this is a guy who was the world champion, a professional world champion. You know, you know what, let's back up even more. This is a guy who's won two Olympic gold medals. This is a guy whose amateur record is 396 wins, one loss. And that one loss, he avenged, not once, Joe, but twice. This is a guy who did everything you could ever do in an amateur 
in an amateur career before he turned pro. And when he turned pro, he became a world champion in his third fight. He became a two weight class world champion in his seventh fight. And he became a three weight class world champion in his 12th fight. Those were all records. You know, the only thing is that, like, that, that also leaves me kind of wondering what the heck happened when he lost to Orlando Solito. Mm -hmm. He lost to Solito, and Solito was able to, uh, to, to beat him. And I, I never saw the rematch, no, no rematch came about. And it was there, but it was Barry mentioned a couple of times, but he never fought Orlando Solito. Uh, Solito was a, a, a decent fighter. Came out, he was a world champion there for a while, but he now has come back to fight other fighters. I'm talking about Lomachenko, but not, did not give Solito that chance. Now, Solito, I think, is over the hill. Well, Solito what, doesn't need a rematch. He already got the win, you know? What, what more does he have to prove? Yeah, but it would have been good for, for, Ola, for Lomachenko Loma? to say, yeah, let, let me. Uh, Fix that up on my that record. A, and that's the only tarnish on his record. I think what happened that night was that Salido, they, they took Salido lightly. They thought that he was a washed up fighter, but they didn't know how smart he was. He's very cagey. He, he fights dirty, man. And, and I don't and, mean dirty like in a bad way, he, which a lot of people do. I he, mean, he knows how to he, use he, his he, elbows, he, his head. And, is. In other words, he's a warrior, knows mm -hmm. how to get into clinches. And anyway, it never happened. But anyway, we can say uh, 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 Salido can always say, I beat. The best in the world, pound for pound. So. Exactly, yeah, he's got that claim to fame, yeah, man. Exactly. So, but let me ask, you know, after doing all those things, all those achievements, everything I just mentioned, he retired four guys on their stool, including, last of all, Guillermo Rigondeau, who was a top 10 pound for pounder on a lot of people's lists at the time. Right. Then he fights Jorge Linares, the gentleman who we just mentioned. And Jorge Linares knocked him down for the first time in his professional career. But he came back, stopped Linares in what was a lot of people's fight of the year. It was an excellent fight. Right. Then he fought, then he, but he hurt his shoulder in that fight, Joe. It's what, you know, right. that was a big deal. So he got invasive, like where they dig in the shoulder, shoulder surgery. And he came back last, I think, December. Yeah. And he, yeah, it was December. And he fought uh, Pedraza. And he, he, he almost he, knocked him down in the 11th, or he, knocked him out in the 11th. Yeah, but. He, he looked good. He would look good. He looked impressive after that surgery, which we thought we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And they picked the right opponent. Yes. But uh, he, you know, he, he passed the grade and went up to the next level. Here he is now fighting. Does it feel like the boxing world kind of cooled off on him? It felt like a year ago at this time, he was the man. He was the future. He was the everything. He's still number one pound for pound. But I asked, does he need to show us something on this Corolla fight? Does he need to put Corolla away? Yeah, he's going to put him away. I think, I think he'll stop him in the early rounds. I, I, don't, I don't think Corolla, uh, I mean, he was world champion in 2016 and 17 when he lost to a uh, Linares. To Linares, but I don't think he's got it for this fight Saturday night. Yeah, I don't think but, he, I don't but, think but, but you know, one thing I must tell people out there, fighters and people in general, you know, sometimes you get knocked down. A good true champion always gets up and keeps going in life. Yes, sometimes we Sometimes things happen in life. We say, what happened? You know, I, I got knocked down. And, and, uh, but you got to come back and show the world. Sometimes a blessing in disguise when things don't go your way. It doesn't mean that you're a loser. It means that it's a learning process. Oh, yeah. And what you do, you come back, you get back on your feet, and you, you, know, you turn out to be better. Sometimes you get, you get better. But if you make the mistake twice, uh, three times, I'm, I'm sorry you're for not, you. Then you're not a champion. Well, that, well right? not that you're a champion, it's that you're not a learner. And if mm -hmm. you don't learn from your mistakes, then something is wrong with you. I always say, learn from your mistakes, can you correct them, make your life better, and if things don't work out, move on with your life and make it better. But there's always a chance for you to move on and uh, become champion. Not necessarily with the fighter you fought, but you can fight somebody else, and maybe it was a blessing, like uh, Mongia, when he fought, uh, Oh yeah. when he was, he, he was turned down to, to fight uh, Triple G, uh, here, Bob Bennett, the executive director of the Boston Athletic Commission, said, "No, we can't take this fighter because he has he has no 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 name fighters on his he resume." He only fought one time out of Mexico. Yeah, I mean, we and, had no idea who he was. Yeah, he was and, unproven, it, and he's not even a middleweight. And he couldn't even. Uh, I mean, his resume didn't, didn't. They have nothing to show no. to, to fight the best middleweight in the world, uh, Triple E, Jenny Golovkin. Mm -hmm. So he went and fought uh, uh, this kid, uh, Salam, Ali? Salam Ali, in New York City, Mass Square Garden, and knocks out Salam Ali becomes. WBA 154 pound champion, and that's where he's now he's defending his title for the fourth time uh, the, I mean, this, beat, this coming beat. Saturday, and uh, it's going to be good for him. You know, he's going to uh, have a good fight against uh, Hogan. Yeah, and uh, I think it'll be a good, a yeah. good uh, showcase for him. He's in a unique position, Joe. Yeah, because he's young, right? He's still like, uh, I mean, he's, as he's far about, as his career, uh, he's 24. Yeah, I he, mean, he's like kind of still not quite prospect age, but he's not quite. But he's already a world champion. He's already a world and champion. And he's a world champion in a very difficult division. Yeah, yeah. So people are going to want to start coming for his belt. People are going to want to start unification. In a normal, you know, in, in, for most people, you would want to take his career a little slower, right? Yeah, well, but because Ahmed McGee is a world champion, he's going to start, I mean, he's going to have to step up. It's, you know, he's like 24 it's, years young. He still has a long career ahead of him. There's no, no reason to rush him. They're, gonna, they're doing with him what they did to Canelo Alvarez 
they say fight Triple G, Triple G, you know, mm-hmm. they, they didn't fight him. They, they waited for when it was time, the timing was right, and they beat him twice. He and dropped so, his belt not to fight Triple G. Do you think yeah. that's a good move for Munguia? Yeah. If he drops his belt eventually so to, to avoid maybe the uh, some of the other monsters in that division, some of the... Uh, well, I don't know if he's going to drop the belt. I mean, he's a tall kid. He could go up to 160 easily, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of tough uh, guys out there yeah, at 160. You don't want to be at You don't so, want to swim in those waters. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I think Munguia is uh, going to be another household name. Just like Canelo Alvarez, and before you know it, Munguia be uh, making a two, three hundred million dollar contract like Canelo. Let's There's a see. lot of rock stars in that division. You know, you got Lara and Hurd and uh, the Charlos and all those guys that we mentioned last week. You know, and they're going to want that. They're going to want that belt. They're going to want that strap. So yeah, it's I, uh, you, you know, the other thing is I haven't seen those guys with the exception of uh, uh, Hurd, uh, no Mayweather, that, that made the big money, the big contract for two hundred thousand, two hundred million dollars, yeah. things like that. I mean, these guys they're not talking about that kind of money. Canelo's got that kind of money. Uh, Canelo's got the most that we see right yeah, now. Yeah, but yeah. Nobody makes Mayweather money, yeah, man. Yeah. Nobody and, makes Mayweather, and, Mayweather and, money. And, yeah, and then you got the heavyweights uh, that are talking about 800, uh, 80, million, 80 pounds, million, yeah. million pounds. I mean, you know, Deontay Wilder turned million. down $120 million. Sure. You, know, you know, I don't know what's about these guys. I, I, I tell you, I, I want to come back. Man. You might do it. I think they, so. They maybe want to come back again. You and, can see that big get, paychecks, and, man. And get back in that ring. I mean, I remember when I was fighting in Madison Square, I got it for $500 for, for a six round fight. You know, come on, in man. the ring. In, in yeah. the ring. I mean, come on. That was kind of money I got as a fighter back in the. What we're talking about back in the '60s. Mm-hmm. You know? That was a lot of money back. You buy yeah. a house with that. Yeah. Well, 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 hey, I remember when the when when the, when the houses were like twenty thousand dollars <laughs> for for a brand new home. I bought I, I bought a brand new car. Cost me less than twenty five hundred dollars. Is that true? Back, back then. Brand new. Yeah. And you so, had to yeah. crank it in the front. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was just about one of those kind of cars. <laughs> no, but I remember buying, I remember buying a Fastback, uh, and it was uh, a Volkswagen Fastback. I think it cost like $1,900, brand new, you know, back That's in 65, 66. Wow, you know. And back then, yeah, uh, yeah what were the fighters fighting for? Yeah, well, Ali was fighting for two, three billion dollars. Three million dollars, biggest star in the world. Yeah. Biggest, greatest, mo- greatest athlete of all time, you know, most famous athlete ever, and, uh, and, and you know, he was fighting for two, three yeah, million dollars. And, and when, you, when you looked at 10, 20 years from now, these fighters will be getting contracts for five hundred, six hundred thousand, maybe even a billion dollar contract. I mean, that's the way it's going with boxing. Any sport, you see these fighters, these athletes are making money, they're going through the roof. Bro, you know. And I just say, Floyd well, Mayweather why? made two hundred and eighty-five million dollars fighting Conor McGregor. That's Two hundred and eighty-five. That's what Forbes quoted. Yeah, I mean, he made nine hundred dollars. Nine, nine, uh, he made nine, ten million. Nine million dollars, ten million dollars when he fought. Fighting that tension guy. He yeah. fought that, that Japanese fighter who was an MMA guy. Was a Never kickboxer, fought, yeah. It was supposed to be an exhibition, and, and I think uh, he got stopped in the first round. The kid was crying all over the place. <laughs> it was I so mean, sad. It was and, sad and, to watch. Mayweather had bought, bought a home here for ten million dollars, and that, that paid off the house for him. It's nothing. That's nothing compared to the. Uh, the billions, he already made a billion dollars in boxing. The only Floyd athlete- Mayweather, honestly, I don't know anyone who's ever done being a prize fighter better. You know what I mean? Like every aspect of it, from the in the ring to the outside of the ring, he's probably the best I've ever seen at being that job. Yeah, it's amazing how sometimes you get these fighters that uh, make the kind of money. There's only a handful of guys that- Pacquiao's the other one, man. Yeah, Pacquiao. Pacquiao. You know, Pacquiao benefited in a lot of ways from having a, a Filipino fan base that, that it treats him like a god, yeah. you know, in a lot of ways. But also, he benefited from not only, I mean, obviously, he's an all-time great. We're not, we're not talking in the ring. We're talking marketability. He fought at the same time as the most profitable fighter of all time, and he was his biggest rival. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, every time you were buying a Floyd fight, you were also buying a Pacquiao fight. And you were a big pack. Everyone was a Pacquiao fan because he was the antithesis of the most hated athlete of the modern era, which, you know, being Floyd Mayweather. And he just, I mean, they were able to market and, and build for, towards each other's success so much, which ultimately culminated in the most profitable fight of all time, the $600 million showdown that they're trying to replicate. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that at the end of the year, Joe. We say it all the time, but I wouldn't be surprised. And I'll tell you what, I'll buy it. I don't care how old they are. They can wheel them out in wheelchairs when they're 80 years old. I'll watch them fight again. I'm not even kidding, man. They're, they're, I grew up watching I mean, those guys. I mean, but these, these are two household names. These guys got two favorites. Just like we watched Muhammad Ali, oh. he, even when he was in his later years, like 38 years of age, mm-hmm. and he was still out there fighting. People came to watch just because it was just because it was Muhammad Ali. And I can tell you one thing that in boxing, uh, it, it, it's a business now. And uh, but when you see these fighters that are up in age, I mean George Foreman. I remember refereeing George Foreman, and the reason why I was chosen to referee that fight because they knew I was a referee that will be watching out for the safety yeah. of the fighters. You know, I, I didn't want to see a guy take too much punishment. And George Foreman was getting beat every round. Round one, two, oh, three, God, four, yes. five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you know, and in the tenth round, 
Instead, instead of me counting out George Foreman, <laughs> it was me counting out Michael Moore. I'll say it 10. That's you one know, of the most Michael iconic Moore. punches, one of the most iconic calls. We all remember Jim Lampley screaming, he did it, oh my God, it happened. Yeah, he, you know, but it was a it was a 45-year-old fighter. But that's not that we have to watch that some of these fighters get up in age. You got to watch them close. No, because exactly. Not all of them are like a But Bernard Hawkins did it. He was in his mid, uh, well, early 40s when he, he kept retired. kept fighting forever, man. When he yeah. lost to Kovalev, he was like 47 or something. Yeah, something like that. Crazy. But, and, you know, he had promised his mother, may she rest in peace, that he was going to retire when he was 40. He, he, kept, he kept that going for another seven, eight more years. Yeah, he just he kept he, it going, man. Yeah. I mean, he's an all-time great. You know, oh, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he did it all, man. Yeah, def definitely. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I, I, serious question, though. Do you think Manny Pacquiao has a better chance at beating a 43-year-old Floyd Mayweather right now or a 28-year-old Errol Spence? I think he has a better chance of a uh, uh, 43-year-old Mayweather. I think so, too. Because uh, Errol Spence is... He's just uh, in his prime, man. It's just yeah, nothing he's against in his it. prime, man. He proved it against... Uh, Mikey, yeah. Mikey Garcia. As he has day. over and over again, yeah, yeah. But Mikey Garcia was a lightweight who went up in weight, but still... So was Errol, Pacquiao. Errol, Errol Spence, we said, if he could beat Garcia, which I thought it was going to be a tough fight you for did? him. He did? Yeah, you called and, Garcia? And, yeah, yeah, and it, it, it didn't turn out that way. I mean, Garcia. No, he just... It was a... I mean, he outlanded him almost five to one. He won all twelve rounds, and yeah. one judge, one judge even gave him a twelve, uh, ten eight round. Wow. It was a one, one hundred seven, one twenty is uh, that's as bad as you can beat somebody without knocking them out. Like yeah, period. Yeah, yeah. But I and, could, uh, I can tell you that that uh, that Anthony uh, Crawler fighting uh, next week against uh, yeah Lomachenko. Lomachenko, even though Crawler is uh, thirty four years of well, he's thirty, he's twenty. Let's see, uh, Crawler is about I, I think, think thirty four. Thirty four years of age. Yeah. And, that, and that's, uh, that's, no, that's not a spring chicken, even though in boxing... Loma's like 31, 32. Yeah, boxers, in, in, generally, you get a fighter that does, wants to show up his skills, show what he's got in the gym to a, a promoter or a matchmaker. Mm -hmm. They come around, they say, first thing they say, how old is he? Yeah. That's why the first question you ask in box, how old is he? That's why there's a lot of questions about a lot of guys, uh, you know, age, because, you know, you lie, because let's say you're, let's say you're 21 years old and you're, you know, a pretty good prospect. But you come to America, you might say that you're 17. It makes you look a lot better. You know, in the promoter's eyes, you got four more years of growth. Yeah, but how, what, how about Luis Ortiz? That's Luis, what I'm saying. <laughs> Luis Ortiz, the heavyweight. Luis King Con Ortiz. They say he's, he's what? like 42, but they he but they say he's probably closer to like 48. Yeah, well, you know, he just keeps it going. You still kick, kicking butt out he's there. Still so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they said the same thing with Rigondeau. That's a lot with the Cuban defectors. You know, a lot of Cuban fighters because there's no records when they come yeah. over, so they can mm -hmm. kind of say whatever they want. Which I don't blame them. I would say that too. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, I'll tell you something, fans, because just because I know we're saying we're not we're kind of counting this guy crawler out. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it if he wins, uh, you know, uh, it's that that's the biggest upset of the year by far. But don't that doesn't mean you don't have to watch this fight. That doesn't mean you don't want to watch this fight. Vasily Lomachenko is the best fighter in the world. He will put on an absolute master class. If you're not even if you're a casual fan of boxing, tune into this fight this weekend or on Friday night on ESPN Plus, because you I mean, this is this is boxing in its in its peak. This is the best version of the best fighter in the world. And uh, you don't want to miss any fights that they put on, honestly. Yeah, the, the other thing is that with Lomachenko, you say he's the best fighter in the world, but then they put him up against somebody who's not really competitive. Mm -hmm. At least not a, people know that Crawler was already two-time world champion, but, or he was champion one time, for two, yeah. one time, two years, 16, mm -hmm. 2016, 17, but four Linares twice. I mean, he's, he's decent, but that was, we're talking about Back at 2017, when, yeah, yeah. when that occurred. I mean, he lost to Linares twice, and, uh, you know. Yeah. And Vasily Lomachenko, he beat Linares, you know, even though Linares knocked him down. It was one of those flash knockdowns. We've seen those before. You caught him with some weight on the wrong foot. It wasn't a hard one. And he came back and stopped him. By the way, Linares, in his last fight, this January, has been the upset of the year for me so far. He lost. He got knocked down three times in the first round, got knocked out. I mean, this is... Uh, you know, we don't know what Lenar, what version of Linares fought, you know, who. I think uh, I think he kind of got gassed uh, after the Loma fight. I yeah, think well, that was yeah, kind of the end of it. You know, let's talk about some of the, the surprising defeats of 2018. Oh, yeah. Now, there were some fighters up there. Uh, Jesse and Magdaleno uh, lost yes. to uh, Bogdan. Dogbe, yeah, yeah. Dogbe, yeah. a fighter from Africa, a featherweight. And he lost to Navarrete. And then he lost to the Mexican fighter, Navarrete. Yeah. And, if, and that, Doug Bowles is not even mentioned anymore. Well, he says he's going to fight Navarrete again, and everybody's counting him out. I don't think he can contend with Navarrete's uh, height and reach, man. Well, I, I really thought don't. Navarrete fought uh, last week some fight in Mexico, and he, he, he didn't look that impressive. You know, these fighters, they become champions. He's, I and mean, they, and they're, they're kind of like, they should get better Munguia and better. beat him twice. I mean, throughout his, like, uh, throughout his, his uh, I don't know, I mean, it's different already. My bad. But I, either way, like, he's, you know, you're right. He's not, 
He's not uh, one. Of, he's not a, a great or anything like that. But he's way too long and strong. Styles make fights, as we yeah. talk about a million times. Yeah. What a uh, defeat we had last year. That was a surprise defeat. But I mean, people said, "Well, how did how did that Tyson happen? Fury, Tyson uh, Fury getting that draw with Deontay Wilder yeah. was a surprise. Yeah, that was a big. And surprise. I know <laughs> all our fans <laughs> out there are going to tell me <laughs> lost, but and you know, what? I, I put I put it out there yesterday. I just go into some of the videos, and I saw Tyson Fury when he went down again. And I, I take my hat off again to uh, Jack Reese, the referee, who did a fine job in not stopping the fight. I mean, I said it on the air the, the same night or the next day. I mean, I called Jack Reese. To yeah, we had Jack Reese on the show. To congratulate him on a job well done for not stopping the fight. But when he got into uh, Tyson Fury's face, it was at four, five. He, he said five, he woke I up. mean, he was still, his eyes were closed. I, I would have stopped it. I wouldn't even bother to count. I wouldn't have counted either. But you know what? Jack Reese saw something we didn't see. And the kid jumped up. Tyson Fury jumped up. F f jumped out like if it was the first round, finished strong. He even hit uh, uh, Wilder with a couple of punches. Yeah, he did. And he was Wilder. dancing around. He looked great. That yeah. was the craziest thing. I mean, that was that was a movie. I mean, everyone wants to act like uh, you know, like Fury was robbed. And I guess yes, I could see how you would absolutely could score it for Fury, and probably should score it for Fury. But Deontay Wilder knocked him down twice with the belt on his home turf. I mean, in front of all these fans. I mean, John Fury, uh, Tyson's dad, said, when I saw my son's eyes roll back in his head, if you told me I could get a draw right then, I'd have taken it in a heartbeat. <laughs> I mean, him getting up and getting the draw after getting knocked down twice by the hardest hit the heavyweight of the modern era. I mean, this was, I mean, this was as epic as it could be. And if you, like I've said before, if all you see is a robbery, then what you're doing is robbing yourself. That was a great moment in boxing history. And uh, I was privileged as anybody to have watched it and to interview the, the ref on the following Monday like we did. Exactly. You know, I think you know, I kept take my hat off again to Tyson Fury. I'd like to see him come back again with a rematch with uh, Deontay Wilder. Yeah, we all would. Or fight uh, Anthony Joshua. Let's see, you know, what he's happens fighting, uh, He's fighting to Thomas and Mac. He's Th fighting somebody, uh, Max Schwartz, I think, or something. Uh, another name that we <laughs> never heard of. And, <laughs> and we do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but these guys, they're, they're out there trying to prove to the world they want to become household names. And you know what? The managers did the right thing. They got him a good fight. They're going to follow him either, you know, either one way or the other because of the fight here with Deontay Wilder. And he'll probably walk away with an easy eight uh, you also see it. Eight million, ten million dollars. He'll make some Easy. money. Yeah. The thing is, when they sign with new networks, that's something I think a lot of people need to understand. Like he just signed with ESPN. ESPN wants to start building his name. They want to start building it in America. They don't want to throw him against Deontay Wilder right away. That doesn't make any sense at all. So even when they even when ESPN and Top Rank offered Deontay Wilder a package, that wasn't they weren't gonna fight him right away. It was gonna be like three fights down the road. That's why Deontay Wilder turned that one down. I mean, it's just that they're you're building. It's the same thing with if you just spent three hundred and sixty-five million dollars to get Canelo Alvarez on your streaming service. You're not going to throw him up against Triple G right away. You throw him up against Rocky Fielding. That's why I'm so impressed that they're going up against Danny Jacobs next. But you got to introduce your fan base to the fighter. Well, and that's what I think, uh, you know, is so important. That's what's so good for them. Yeah, Jack, uh, Danny Jacobs. I interviewed Danny Jacobs. And Danny Jacobs uh, told me, uh, Joe, I was surprised that he was able to, uh, to, uh, to accept my challenge. Because, I was amazed, man. Because I think that him fighting a, 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 a Triple G... Uh, Fighting a Canelo Alvarez, it's a, it's a big, uh, a big surprise in, in the boxing world. I mean, I mean, uh, look, I we mean, gave him a lot of. Danny Jacobs was, was uh, Joe. I can't believe that they accepted me. And, and everybody knows he's the toughest guy out there. He's up there, man, and he is tall. I mean, everybody wants to count out Danny Jacobs uh, because you know Canelo's the man, and he's in his, his house, and and Canelo, you know, it, Canelo is the man. He's the he's the most famous boxer in the world, no question. But Danny Jacobs is like six foot one, and. Uh, it's hard to fight, and you're not. It's not like he's fighting Rocky Fielding, who's six foot one. Yeah. He's fighting Danny Jacobs, who's six foot one, and it's hard to contend with that reach. I mean, we saw what we don't really know how great he can do against taller fighters who are of the, at that level. And I'm excited to find out. And I'll tell you that right now. I I'm very excited. Now, what do you think about the rehydration clause that they put in there that you know Danny Jacobs can't rehydrate to a certain level because he's you know known for doing that against Triple G. He rehydrated to where he was almost you know 20 pounds heavier than Triple G. Well, they, they got the clause in there where he's only allowed to rehydrate a certain amount. Do you think that's going to affect his uh, ability come fight night? No, I don't think so. I think he he, been, he knows he knew that coming in, so he's already been uh, adjusting his weight from day one when he signed that contract. Well, they just did the thirty day weigh in the other day. Uh, Canelo was one sixty eight, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the limit is one seventy six, and Danny Jacobs was one seventy five point eight. So he's up there, man. I mean, he's Danny Jacobs is a big guy. Yes. People don't realize he's big. Canelo, he's a lot bigger than Canelo Alvarez. But we we just hope that it doesn't affect him for the fight. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if he had, if it does affect him, then he has another choice but to go up to to the light heavyweight division, one seventy five. Yeah, I mean, or, which is, or the one sixty eight. Yeah, one sixty eight maybe might be yeah, his natural yeah, home. Yeah.
Which there's a lot of mo- there's a lot of killers up there too. We talk about them all the time, man. There's a lot of killers up at 168. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm 168. So I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm, Joe Cortez is I'm number one, one contender. I'm, I'm one of the killers out there. <laughs> He's one of the killers. One of the sharks in that division. <laughs> we want to make sure we touch on Hammer and Shields. Um, I'll admit I don't know a lot about their fighting styles. I don't know a lot about their record, but I know they're both undefeated, 22 and 0 and 8 and 0. I know that this is the most highly anticipated uh, women fight maybe of all time, and uh, that's going to be on Showtime. I know that I'm going to watch it because it's exciting. And uh, I, I'm looking very forward to watching those two. I love what they're doing for the sport of boxing. I love what they're doing for the sport of female boxing. And uh, I mean, I, I, I wish I could analyze it more. You know, I, I'll be able to after the fight, but I don't really, I don't know much about, uh, about them, as, or their fight styles or their careers. I can tell you that women in boxing uh, has always been a dragon in the back, but yeah. you, you got names like Christy, Christy Martin. Oh yeah, uh, who was uh, fighting a lot of Mike, Mike Tyson's on the card. Mm-hmm. And she was a very popular female fighter who will all come out dressed in pink, and she was kicking butt out there. Oh, yeah, Layla Ali. Yeah, yeah, and Layla Ali was She's another one. She's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, and I, got, and I was there, I had the privilege of ne- uh, refereeing these young ladies, and you know what, I treated them like I would treat a regular a male fighter for a simple reason, that they came in condition. I know that they can fight. They had They're good fighters, defense. Man, yeah. They had good gross. defense, good offense. They were good. And I, I remember uh, Chrissy Martin getting paid $500,000 for a fight on the undercard for Mike Tyson. Almost, almost every Tyson card here in Vegas, the donkey promoter, he had Chrissy Martin on there. That's smart, though. Yeah, it was a smart That's move. That's smart, you know? man. That's a good promoting yeah, tactic. You know? I'll tell you, John. And, and I can tell you that next Saturday when you have the Hammer versus the Shield, it's gonna be. It's not going to be easy for either one of them. No. They're, they're, they're both undefeated. The other thing that Shield does not have the experience that, uh, that the Hammer, hammer, does, the hammer yeah. had. The Hammer 24 and all record and Shield with only eight uh, pro. Eight no, yeah, but eight she's no. been super impressive But, but she's been a two-time Olympic champion. So uh, she, she what be, differences do you notice when you're in there, man? Well, when you you're know, in there with the uh, with the women versus the men, I mean, you've been in, in the so ring more I can, times I can, than I, I've you, seen a ring. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, they're not as, as uh, aggressive and coming in with a killer instinct. They, they have they have some, but not uh, a lot. You gotta you gotta feel them out. You gotta see what what, what they how they reacted to the punches. Mm-hmm. You know, there's I less think, knockouts usually, it, right? Well, yeah, they, well, there's. Sometimes there's, there's good knock. It depends, you know, the fighters. Well, of course, no, I just, they, but I look they, at their they, records and there's usually less knockouts, but then again, you never know. Yeah, well, you have, a, well, this girl, uh, Hammer, with a, with, a, with a 17, actually, she has a, like 12, uh, right? 12 she, knockouts? She has a 12 knockouts, 11 knockouts. 11. And cool. Shields has a two knockouts. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Hammer does seem to. Well, yeah, but out the 11 out of 22, out yeah. of 22 fights. So. Yeah, it, 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 but yeah, that's still a 50% KO rate. That's not bad. That's At not that bad. weight class, if, that'd be good for a man. Yeah, you know what I mean? That, that, we got to see what happens against Shields. I'm excited it, to it see that. It's going to be interesting. Fight, to be I think, I think this is one fan, I'm looking forward to more than anyone except for the Lomachenko fight. Yeah, I think the fans should really watch this fight to see once and for all what women have in the ring. Do you they, do they have deserve a These shot? These are the two best in the world. I mean, there's yeah. no more, you know what I mean? This is the two best, and, yeah. and I don't know what more you could ask for. Spe- I also want to touch on jo- Joey Spencer. He's one of my favorite uh, prospects out there. We've had him on the show. You are, uh, you know, you were in contact with him, and I know his, uh, and you know his family. I, uh, I love watching that kid fight. And if you're a fight fan, you should love watching that kid fight. Right. He's got kind of a cockiness to him that, uh, you know, kind of, kind of the Tiafimo Lopez kind of uh, style where, where it doesn't love everybody, it doesn't rub everybody the right way, but it rubs me the right way. I love watching that kid stand over his opponents. I love watching him slap his gloves together before he knocks you out. I love the way he does business. And, uh, and he's exciting and he speaks well. And uh, he's, he's an up-and-comer, man, that I, I would not surprise me to see him be one of the next faces of the sport. Yeah, he's one of the young fighters that got turned pro at the age of 17. And you don't find many fighters turning pro at that age. However, Devin Haney Not did America. it, and uh, uh, a kid named Acosta uh, from uh, here from Vegas. Uh, these two, these these young fighters, they have a lot of skills, and, they, and they're so advanced that they they have to turn pro a little earlier just mm-hmm. because they, they're so advanced. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're not gonna keep fighting amateurs, that you know yeah, what I mean? You yeah, gotta... yeah, yeah. But this kid, I like Romeo Acosta. Romeo, oh, yeah. Ro- Romeo Acosta here from Vegas. He's half Mexican, half Afro American. He's been fighting uh, most of his fights in Tijuana. Recently, won by knockout again in the first round, and uh, he has uh, the skills. He has a uh, good boxing skill. I like him too. And uh, uh, Devin Haney, whom I uh, have, I'm, an, a I'm an advisor on their team. I'm part of their team. Devin Haney is going to be one of the best in the in the history of uh, modern boxing. He he really brings a lot a, hey. a style, a lot of class to boxing. Low key, he's not a. Uh, a yak, yak, yak guy, he's quiet. He's not afraid of he, being to, to talk, though. Yeah, I mean, he, when they put a, a microphone in his face talking about Shakur Stevenson or Tiafimo or any other young greats of his era, he's not afraid to respond, which I like. 
Yeah, he's a kind of guy that not, doesn't like to talk to him. He likes his fist to talk for him in the ring. And they really do. You know, which is what I like. I've been around boxing, like I said, many years of my life, and I can see some of the good fighters out there. Most of the good ones are not talkers. They're kind of kind of shy to some extent. They, they, don't, they don't blab off their mouth. Well, it depends. But, you know, but, there's but, a difference. But, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's a business. You know, they like, they like to promote this stuff, just like uh, Conor McGregor when he fought Mayweather. He was all the talking. Mayweather said, keep talking, man. You're selling a lot of tickets. People respond to that. Whether <laughs> yeah. you love it or whether you hate it, people mm -hmm. respond to that in-your-face brashness that, uh, you know, and especially when you're in the ring, I got, I got nothing against it. I Personally, I love it, to be honest with you. I love the trash talk. I love the, the ah, attitude. But then again, I get why people don't like it. I get why a lot of, for instance, Hispanic fight fans, you know, they really, they, they admire the kind of Aztecan, quiet, humble warrior spirit, you know, which I love. Uh, again, uh, fans, I just want to remind you one more thing again. I'd like to always wrap it up with a little nice touch of uh, my experiences in life. I can tell you a lot of things happen in life that sometimes we don't agree with, but we have to roll with the punches. And sometimes by rolling with the punches, it doesn't hurt as much. You know, you stay there and take it and keep taking it, you get knocked out. You learn from the, the mistakes we make in life. So we have to try to improve our ways. And sometimes it's meant to be that way. You come back, I said early part of the show, you learn from your mistakes, you come back, you make it better, make a better life. If you don't fight that champion because you lost, you come back and fight another champion. So same thing goes in life. If you have somebody in your life, things will work out, whether it's your bosses or at home, your brothers, your sister, family, any, anybody, you know what? Chill, take it easy. Life can always be better. God is watching over all of us. He'll protect all of us. He'll put us in the right direction. With that said, keep our guards up at all times, protect us at all times, and remember, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. God bless you all.